Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and I am super excited to bring you a species profile. Yes, we've talked about these fish before, but it was a number of years ago and quite frankly, I don't think that video was quite up to the quality that you've come to expect from our channel. So we're gonna be discussing the guppy. It is an amazing fish full of color and personality. It's one of the most popular fish in freshwater fish keeping for a reason. Today we're gonna to talk about how to care for it, how to breed it, appreciate you being here. Hope you enjoy the video. So I am really excited to talk to you about the guppy. This is a very common fish. It is one that most new fish keepers have heard of and it's a fish that gets people into the hobby and for a lot of good reasons. We are going to see some really beautiful fish throughout this video from a number of different sources. Guppies originally came from the northeast part of South America, but they have since pretty much found a place all over the world and especially in the United States. Why? I think it's pretty obvious. They are absolutely beautiful fish. Both the males and the females can show excellent color and the males can get such really pretty finish. And that is just one of the things that attracts people to these fish. They stay small, which is also pretty cool. Usually females are gonna be a little bit larger, a little bit rounder. They're gonna top out at around two inches or so. The males are gonna be slightly smaller, a little bit thinner, often have better color. And like I said before, the fins are gonna be a little nicer too. By the way, if you are looking for high quality guppies, can't find them in your area, check out flipaquatics.com. I will put their information down in the description below. They are a channel sponsor. They've got some nice guppy selections on their website. Again, their information will be down below. Now these fish, again, one of the reasons why they're so popular is they're peaceful. Generally speaking, they more or less keep to themselves. Yeah, males can be a little bit hard on one another at times, and males will sometimes harass females a little bit for breeding, but for the most part, these are a peaceful community fish that are gonna often give you around two to five years of great enjoyment. Now, when it comes to tank mates, you do have some options here. We just need to keep a couple things in mind. We don't want really large fish in the tank that could potentially view the guppy as food. And we don't want fin nippers in the tank. So some good potential options might be some of your smaller neons, like your black neon tetras, possibly your gold neons, your ember tetras, rubby nose and glow lights. Hatchet fish for the top of the tank would be pretty cool. Some of your rasboras, like your pork chop rasboras and brilliant green rasboras. Cherry barbs might work. If you're looking for like a centerpiece sort of fish, you've got the sparkling garamis, the honey garami. If you've got a large enough tank, maybe even a pearl garami. Peacock gudgeons are pretty cool. If you're looking for fish that are gonna also maybe take care of some algae for you, things like otocinclus, bristlenose plecos, Mystery snails may work. At the bottom of the tank, you've got your quarry cats and your coolie loaches. If you were thinking about keeping these fish with some type of cichlid, I would definitely choose cichlids that are gonna stay on the smaller side and on the less aggressive side. So your epistogramma, your crebensis, curviceps, keyhole cichlids, all might be options. A lot of people ask, can you keep guppies with bettas or mollies or sword tails? And for these fish, I would exercise a bit of caution. Yes, yeah, sometimes it works just fine. Other times, not so much. One reason for that is bettas can tend to be a little bit aggressive. And so sometimes they will nip at guppies. The second thing is guppies will sometimes be too active for bettas and tend to stress them out. So while it's worked for people, sometimes it doesn't work out so well. Mollies and sword tails are a little bit different. While the mollies and the sword tails like the same water parameters, and they are live bearers like your guppies are, which we'll get into in a moment, mollies and sword tails tend to be more assertive and will often bully guppies. And so you have to be very careful there, especially with larger mollies and especially with male sword tails.
All right, let's talk a little bit about water parameters. Guppies, generally speaking, are gonna do well somewhere around mid 70s up to about 80 degrees. And so for the most part, for most people, your tank is in fact going to need a heater. pH, they're gonna do well as long as your pH is around seven or higher. Our pH is right around an 8.2, and as you will see throughout the video, our guppies thrive at that pH. Water hardness, guppies do like harder water. I would recommend somewhere between eight to 15 degrees. Our water hardness for both our GH and our KH is right around 10 degrees hardness. And in that water, they're doing happy and living a healthy long life. Water quality does need to be good. That means no ammonia, no nitrite, and trying to keep our nitrates around 20 parts per million or less. You definitely want to have a cycle tank. This is not a fish where you want to have them cycling the tank for you. If you don't know what a cycle tank means, check out the video in the upper right hand corner. That will be very helpful. Now, feeding guppies is a very easy thing to do. They don't tend to be very picky. We feed our fish north fin flakes and in the case of guppies, north fin micro pellets and they love both of those types of food. They will also go crazy for frozen brine shrimp frozen bloodworms, and they love live baby brine. Even the adults will love live baby brine shrimp. The tank size for your guppy should be somewhere at least around 10 gallons or larger. The problem with keeping guppies in a smaller tank than 10 gallons is they are an active fish. They are constantly on the move and it's pretty cool because they will inhabit the entire tank from top to bottom, side to side. So they're going to need a little bit of space to swim and later on, you're probably going to want some space for your guppy fry. Now, when it comes to decorating that tank, it's not particularly challenging. Guppies really don't interact with the substrate, so you can go sand or gravel. The color really doesn't matter. Guppies tend to stand out the nicest when the dark, when the substrate is a little bit on the darker side and your background and your fish tank is a little bit on the darker side, like you're seeing in some cases throughout this video. Rocks, plants, either fake or real, driftwood, are all great ways to make your guppy feel a little bit more safe, a little bit more at home. If you are planning to breed the guppies and you want to keep the fry, it's really important to have some top cover on your tank, which means you're going to want to have some type of a live plant. Usually we use hornwort or guppy grass, and that's going to provide some cover to increase fry survival. The other thing that you're going to want to make sure of is that your filtration is not too strong. So whether you're using a hang on back filter or a canister filter, you don't want that flow to be very strong blowing your guppies around. Especially your males, they've got longer finish and they, they will eventually tire out if they're constantly having to fight against strong water flow. The other thing to consider if you want to breed guppies is you're going to want an intake sponge if you're using an, a hang on back filter or a canister filter so your little tiny fry don't get sucked up into the filter. So let's talk about breeding these awesome fish. This is not a hard thing to do provided that you can meet their water parameters. Generally speaking, I like to start with a male and three or four females. That male is going to be constantly chasing the females around, trying to breed. The guppies are a little bit interesting in that the males have a gonopodium, which is a specialized reproductive organ that it inserts into the female, releases sperm, and then the female can actually hold that sperm for a number of months. So it's not uncommon for people to bring home a female guppy and see baby guppies a few weeks later. So once the female has received the sperm, like I said, she can hold it for a number of months. If there are fertilized eggs, it usually takes a few weeks for those fry to begin showing up in your fish tank and they're going to be relatively small and so they are prone to predation by other fish and so if you have guppies in a community tank, 
most often the fry are going to have a hard time surviving, especially if you've got some larger fish in there, like some of the ones I mentioned before, like maybe a honey grommy or a pearl grommy or some of those smaller cichlids. While they will leave the adult guppies alone usually, most of them are going to eat guppy fry. Even adult guppies will often eat guppy fry. Thus, keep the top cover in there with the hornwort or the guppy grass. And I've also found that if I'm trying to breed guppies, keeping the adults well fed also cuts down considerably on fry predation. One of the coolest things about guppies is they are live bears, which means when the fry are born, they are born little tiny fish, ready to go, ready to meet the world. Now, as I mentioned, the fry are gonna be very tiny and they're generally gonna hang out towards the top of the tank, thus the reason for the top cover. When they are first born, they really go crazy for live baby brine shrimp, but it's not necessary. You could crush up some flake food and that will work as well. But I find the live baby brine when I'm really trying to encourage breeding to help not only help the, the adults wanna breed, but it also increases fry survival. Now the parents are not gonna be taking care of the fry as I mentioned already. They will sometimes try to eat the fry, but it is a really rewarding fish to keep. So many interesting colors and fin varieties. Um, males and females can both look absolutely awesome. This is a wonderful fish to try out. If you haven't tried guppies before, it's a great fish. If you've never bred fish before and you wanna get into breeding fish, Guppies are usually that gateway fish that gets people into breeding and gets them interested in that. So if you want more information on some potential tank mates, take a look at the description below. Again, if you're looking for quality guppies, can't find them in your area, check out flipaquatics.com. Appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one.